you could say this is borrowed from a Donald Trump, uh, or maybe it's Hillary Clinton, I'm not sure who's going to win the election in the end, but anyway, but where is the next president? Um, and you might call it a complaint, in that um, it's an old PowerPoint done before any number of uh, adversities, um, meaning that when you get a uh, quarter million dollar offer to do something in, say, Germany on this subject, uh, then suddenly the scientists say, well, you can't do that, you're not allowed, you're not qualified, and we can't like, let you as an artist do what you're doing. Or then New Zealand, or then Holland. Um, and the latest episode was where I'd be uh, going to China to present this idea, and uh, they were very excited, and then uh, I arrived in China for nothing uh, at the airport, and then I found out five days later that it was held at JFK by our government on the grounds that uh, well, we really shouldn't show these ideas with uh, foreign countries. Well, what do you do? Um, and I think the real question is, uh, not to be too com complaining, but that uh, what we need to do to make, not just the United States, but the world great again, is to get the avant-garde that was underway in the 70s to become operational and become what we do normally so that we have an entirely new fuel base, an entirely new energy system, an entirely new land use, and we depart the things that have ruined our planet. Uh, all these are possible, all these are scientifically known, there's nothing particularly mysterious, it's actually done the whole budget, but they're not done. And they're not done because of things like oil companies and so forth, best interests. Uh, so the plea, or the call, and I say also plan, because I gave a talk there, and then I came up with the whole Michigan plan, from the Great Lakes, that we did not be that far, there are a lot of lakes up there, and Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, all the, uh, as you know, recon states. And um, the thing is that it doesn't happen because we live, and I'm wearing my clerical black, we live in an art world which is a religion of disbelief. Nobody believes in art. They all think that art is some kind of a joke and kind of funny and a bit off and it can't really happen. So that if you had Joseph Boys or Dennis Alpenheim or Marcel Duchamp or Carolee Schneemann or Mary Beth Edelson or Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Horn and so on, if you had all these artists, or even the collaboration I did with Jenny Holzer about how to reorganize North America, and any of these things are, well, they're not really real, they're just art. We can't really do what you're saying, because if we really did that, it would be somehow a, a revolution, a radical, or went too much. So that there's a real need now to have maybe, because Hey, things we don't know what's going to happen. Maybe we take art for real. Okay, so that's sort of why. I, mean, I guess we're in the bar. I'm going to be depressed if this thing go forward. What I just say next? Okay. Uh, well, that's very much like that. You saw that my clothes. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to say it very quickly, and I'm trying to. I know I have five minutes, but <laughs> the point is that when you're a cave artist, your life is on the line. If they came back from the buffalo hunt with no animals or dead, they would just, well, magic, uh, we have to get rid of you or put you on the hunt, but you certainly can't make art anymore. So you need the art to survive. You need the art to figure out how to throw the spear at the animal. You need the art to know what the animal is. And now that piece, they say is a joke. It's not a joke. If you're in a trench in World War I, you need that. And that's pretty much what Marcel Duchamp faced when he left France. He was about to get grafted into trenches, and his brother died, as you know. Now, the thing is, that is said to be the most important, most influential artwork of the 20th century by a conference of art historians in London, 2005. It was influential. Let it influence us, Nick. Let's have a world organized by next. By your own. The Atlantic Urinal, the Indian Ocean Urinal, the Pacific Urinal, and the Central Asia Urinal. We have urinals, instead of other kind of ideas of statues, the paradigm for planning and planning, and we have to center everything on Antarctica. Now that would be an interesting thing for Mr. Trump, or Mr. Putin, or Mr. Z from China. And here is the thing to achieve. That is a work by Dennis Oppenheim. Uh, it was commissioned by the Museum of Modern Art in 68, I believe. It was a part of an ocean project. And his fantasy was we would take vegetation in the water, put it together, rot it, and then make flame. Okay, you can make fire, can make fire. We can make fire from seaweed in the water. Next. And the paradigm of Joseph Boys is back corner, you can perform it and analyze it. You can break down the 
the whole chemistry of fat corner next to a cycle going round and round between methane, carbon dioxide, and oxygen, and animals, plants, archaebacteria, and bacteria, discovered the same year by a scientist called Carl Wolves, as of those boys and Carl Wolves were on the same page. Next. And you did a little bit, of, of course, in the general idea of ambient artwork, like Spiral Getty, which could become standard land use. I'm looking at this map right now in Texas. Next. And you did also the landscape in the rear, say, I was also including the states in China, where you need to have meanders in the mountains to slow down the rivers and stop the problems of soil erosion. Next. All this promise of course, and all those paradigms we have in Earth are from the late 70s. On its way now in Washington, D.C., but never used. Here's what you can do for the Delta down by Gang C, for the Delta down where I'm going to be in Texas down by the Trinity River. Next. Another paradigm. Ha ha ha. Bicycle wheel. Well, there was a French engineer, Paul Soleil, who developed the idea of a rotating wheel to incent dams. And said this would save rivers and not destroy fish, not destroy the ocean. If you combine that very lightweight paradigm of engineering like this, next, in sources like that, next, in areas like that already existing in many parts of the world, just old water wheels and setups, you can produce all the electricity you need in very highly diffuse areas without having giant dams, which are now being built by China like crazy to run the ocean and planet. So, Let's have this kind of industry done by people all over the place instead of having giant dams done in mega structural ways. Next. And they could uh, pick up stuff from the canals. This was the, was the scheme in Holland. There's plenty of stuff in the canals, plenty of stuff here and there. They picked up, scooped up, scooped the poop, scooped the urinal, and next. They do the same thing in the water, in the ocean. Next. The same thing does it with that. And that has been proven to work. It is, there are all kinds of studies, but it's why are we making this happen? You would have people who have no jobs do it. And I said this in Michigan. For example, Michigan, what I found out. 85% of the water in Michigan goes to power to, to nuclear and fossil fuel power plants. Just to clean, you know, cool out everything all that. Well, you don't need to do that. You're going to have water wheels. You're going to have backups of all kinds of water plants. And they're available. Next. And you have this kind of rate, which is uh, simply a design and work on with a big market in France, well, let's go ahead and build it, make it happen, next. And there's a model for next. And it was that. That was done when, and it can be done locally, it can be done all over the planet, it can be done all the time, for example, next. And this is how people, okay, people, they can do it, next. Uh, and for example, all the red areas are one kind of uh, weed you can work with, all the yellow areas another kind, all the blue areas another kind. And I've demonstrated and actually been shown again and again uh, by people at Caltech, people at US, uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, people in the French government, uh, that this is a feasible way of doing things that's never happening. Why? The oil companies are afraid shit was about it. Well, let's go around. Next. Uh, and place of work, for example, and I take Great Britain. The reason why there's no living material, it's all red light, okay? But I find most of the coast has no uh, life in the ocean because of dams. Everything's all dammed up, clogged. There's no water wheels. There's just barriers, and the water can't get, the sediment can't get through, the light can't happen. But in more reddish areas, you can be in a harvest, 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 and make energy on site. Next. Now, here's my thing about Donald Trump in China. In New York State, in 1982, just for the time that Burshard and so on became to an end and sort of died out, there was a Congress in New York State, it was by the New York State, the Sea Grant Institute, New York State, Sea Week Graph and Farm Design in the United States and China, proposing that the energy system change from oil to renewable water plant farming. So you guys organized a conference for dead within a year. Next. So we can begin to restore the animal habitat next. That's what the pig ciphers. And so we can not have that happen to us. Where we are dead, we can't even get the animal. Next. And that's what I'm basically proposing to do. But as I said, I can't get stuff sent to China. I as you do another kind of thing there, but you don't have to show it. Uh, I've had people come in to, I have someone say you can't show this in Madrid. I would be too sensitive. 
and then of course you have a constant problem of running into various interests that absolutely do not want the people to gain power over their resources using ARC. That's it.